In November, Build is completely close to the thermal circuit of the Sevalmash Design and Technological Bureau. This task was accomplished with the completion of the installation of the airlock on the second floor of the building. The two largest areas of builders' work in November were the installation of interior partitions on all floors and the connection of the heating mains to the building. The installation of the interior partitions has begun on the ground and first floors of the production building and in the warehouse area. Now you can see the dense forest of metal frames growing there, and rows of building materials for future partitions are lined up on the floor. In the administration and utility building, these works had begun earlier, so the installation of partitions on the first floor is nearing completion. Separate rooms have been formed there, doors are installed, and the installation of internal utility systems has begun. On the second floor of the administration and utility building, both metal frames and sandwich panels are being assembled. In addition, the builders have already laid tiles on the ground floor of the building, and on the first floor they are getting ready to lay the final flooring in certain areas. Depending on the area, it will be tile or linoleum. The installation of the rainwater drainage system has started. Temporary heating in the building of the Design and Technological Bureau maintains a comfortable temperature for the builders. Thanks to this, it became possible for the first time to broadcast the program expert time from the territory of the Design and Technological Bureau. Outside the building, beyond the Savamash site, the builders dug a trench to connect to the heat distribution point. Soon, the heat distribution pipes will be laid in it. At the site next to the Design and Technological Bureau, builders poured concrete over the slab of the place where the climate control equipment will be located. Least power supply cabinets were dismantled, and several Masha's own equipment was installed instead. It will reduce the rental costs. Most of the outdoor material storage area was moved inside the building. The subconcrete has been poured inside the excavated pit. Binding of fittings was started and a well was arranged for connecting external utilities. Temporary road slabs have been dismantled. On November the 12th, the Solar Group opened a national representation in Northern Macedonia, the 22nd in the world, and held the first conference for the country in Skopje. The event was attended by about 140 people, the most active investors and partners, as well as newcomers. Top managers of Solar Group, national partner in Northern Macedonia, Vasko Popovsky, and other speakers spoke in front of them. Among the participants of the conference, there were many technical experts who were interested in the specifics and applications of the Slavanga technology. In the framework of the conference, several business meetings were held between Solar Group delegation and representatives of local business and state institutions. Communication with businessmen, officials, experts in the field of electric equipment and manufacturers of electric transport was an important part of the Solar Group delegation's visit to India. Our team, consisting of the head of advertising and public relations Pavel Filipov, commercial director Pavel Shatsky, national partner in Russia Alexander Manjula, and leading partner in India Kiranjit Singh, visited Electric Mobility Summit. Speakers at the summit and leaders of leading companies presented their solutions to the most pressing problems of the industry. Solar Group team participated in the event to analyze market trends and prospects for the next five years. On November the 19th, the Solar Group conference was held in New Delhi, which was one of the largest events in the history of the project. It was attended by more than 600 guests. They learned the latest news, project development results in different countries, and financing figures from the project's top executives. They saw motors with combined windings and machinery with Slavanka technology. The discussion also focused on the trend of transition to electric transport in India and other countries. Solar Group business meetings were also held as part of conferences in Vietnam and Indonesia. In Vietnam, our delegation met with an engineer from a company that sells and services household, construction and medical equipment that uses electric motors. The engineer saw a motor with combined windings in person for the first time. He asked a lot of professional questions and was impressed with Slavanka's capabilities. In Indonesia, there was a meeting between Andrei Lobov, Director of Production Corporation Resource, and Indonesian engineers. There were 20 participants apart from engineers, as well as national partner of Solar Group in Indonesia, Laura Ginter, and leading partners. Engineers learned about the advantages of Slavanka and examples of its application in transport and not only. They saw an electric kit based on the motor with combined windings. They discussed possible options of cooperation and exchanged contacts. On the 5th of November, a conference with the participation of top managers of Solar Group was held in Bulgaria. The event was attended by over 40 guests. Bulgaria is one of the most active countries in the project, along with large countries such as Russia, India and Indonesia. 
Solo Group expects to increase the activity of parties and investors in those countries where the conferences were held, as it usually happens after major conferences. Two of Solo Group conferences with personal participation of the company's top managers has ended for 2022 and will resume at the beginning of 2023.